Hello, welcome to tutorial 3 modeling a Pantera in Blender. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to actually go about modeling the car. Before we begin, I'd like to just uh, cover a few things about 3D modeling in Blender or any other program. First, there are no, just there's no one single way to model everything out there. As I said before, I uh, started modeling airplanes and uh, I use a completely different method usually for modeling airplanes where I basically create a very large plane and subdivide it and kind of lay it over the uh, fuselage in various places. For automotives which have many little complex curves and turns and uh, things in them that are very difficult to model. There are many methods. One of them is polygon subdivision modeling where, you're, where you create a very large uh, cube encompassing the entire blueprint and uh, subdivide it, making many smaller uh, squares out of it and align the, the vertices of the individual squares to your blueprint. Uh, that I don't use that one. I use one where I start with a basic shape and I extrude off of it. There's also spline modeling where you lay down a spline along the lines of the car and extrude off that. That's very effective, especially in applications like true space. But uh, for this one, just uh, hang in there and I think this is one of the easiest methods that I know of, of uh, constructing a car. Now first off, I'm going to delete these little extra lights and things. We don't need them right now. Something else here uh, I'd like to draw your attention to. The XYZ lines. There are these plain markers here. This is of course zero zero on the X Y zero 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 on the X Y and Z axes. And uh, of course when we go to perspective view later on to take a look at our car, half of it is going to be above the grid plane and half below it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm oops, not grease pencil. I'm going to use a background image. Let's see here, I'm gonna move it up, sorry. Use the background image tool to move it up just for the front and this side. Okay, that's okay. Now down here, where the cursor, I don't like that cursor. Background image. Oops, wrong way. Okay, and I'm just gonna move it up. You can faintly see the green line there. And uh, I'm gonna move it up towards even several clicks will do this. It's not a lot of clicks, but anyway. Once I get it up there, and I can kind of see... Alright, now, that's pretty good. So, also, in other version, or in the other videos, I showed you how to adjust out using the well, on the notebook, you're using the function key and the minus button. You can also do it with your mouse button. It's very easy. I just showed you that method because it's, uh, some people may have problems with their mouse button. Like, actually, I did at the time. So, you can also go down here, view, view all. Yeah. Anyway. So, we're going to zoom in on that and get rid of these windows. Alright, to start modeling, we are going to zoom in on this portion of the car. We're going to be modeling the fender. Now, what we want to do first is click the space bar, add mesh circle. Okay, this gives us the number of vertices. Of course, we can add or subtract from that. 32 is okay, radius 1. Everything's all right. Hit OK. Now, what it's done here, if you look on our top view, is give us a circle. And uh, we need to move this out a little bit. The circle is laying uh, 
parallel to the top drawing, which we need it parallel to the side drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to click this donut shaped icon. And what this does is give us a rotary tool. And we just rotate it sideways like that by right clicking and dragging, left clicking and dragging, excuse me. Get my my sides messed up here. Okay, now I'm gonna slide this down. Oops. Move that end to where it needs to be about right there. Ah, uh, whoops, we've got a little slight adjustment problem. No, no we don't. There we are. That's about perfect. Now I'm going to click on the hand to get rid of that. Now to move it freely, I'm going to hit G, and that puts it right in there. Now back here. Okay. So I hit the tab, and all of a sudden I have these vertices. And I'm going to, these are the 32 vertices that it, we saw when we created it. Now, I'm going to select the vertice right here. They're kind of lighting up as I hit them. I'm selecting these by holding down the shift key and left mouse, or excuse me, right mouse clicking on them. I'm going to go around and select all of them. Like so. Until I get to where I'm below the fender. Alright, now once I have these selected, you can see there's one, two, three, four down here, five that aren't selected. I'm going to go down here and hit extrude. Now it goes up here, I right click or left click on it and it says only edges, extrude only edges. Okay, now I'm going to stretch this all the way up to here. Okay. And when I reach the top of the fender where I'm going to begin modeling, actually I'm going to stretch it all the way up to here. Okay. Now, what I can do at this point is I can begin my modeling. So I left click on that and I'm going to hit G, Z, which allows me to move it down. Now I'm going to move it down to there. This top half here, I left click to set the point. I'm going to get GY, and now I can move it all the way over here. And that is forming the outside of the fender, or excuse me, the wheel well flare. Now, GY, I'll move that over there again. And left clicking on it, GZ. It down a little bit off. So GY, there we go. So GY, GZ. After a while, you kind of get the feel for where these things are supposed to go. Just a little adjustment. Now you're going to go around and do this for all of them GY, GZ. GY, a little bit back, okay, GY, GZ, GY, just this combination of GY and GZ. Now I want to make a point here that as you notice, this really looks symmetrical here. You want to keep it that way as much as possible because if you don't, you can run into some adjustment problems later on. It's not perfect right now, but we will make it as close as possible. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
if you don't left click on it sometimes it'll reset it in a way that you don't want so it's always best to left click on it keep the flow of that going there so see we're just kind of going in on the outside of this fender flare and just modeling it in expanding a little bit. We're getting kind of thin at the top here. Get the idea. Okay. Here, we're going to start grabbing them just from the other side because I want to change pace a little bit. Remember, if you screw up and make a mistake, you can always hit alternate U and it brings up the undo history. So, and trust me, I make a lot of mistakes in Blender and other programs. So, GUI, kind of resembling a weird sort of seashell at this point. And that's what you want because that means it's. really kind of falling where it needs to. In the end, when you really make it look good, you're going to have to make sure those points are pretty good with respect to the distance. Okay, GY and GZ. Not perfect, but we've got kind of, you can see, there's a little space here, but that's all right. Now, what we're going to do is, we don't need these points down here, so I'm going to hold down my shift key, right click on them, and I'm going to hit the delete key, and it's going to say erase vertices, edges, faces, vertices. So now I delete the vertices, there's nothing else there. Now what I want to do is I want to come here, and I'm going to hold down on shift, and right click, and select these vertices on the insides, 